crashed a little bit as well. No, 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 let it fucking cool down. Alright, welcome back to Ranch Life and welcome to part 3 of the Little Bastard Rebuild Project for Dubshed. As you can see, the thing got an absolute kicking in the shakedown, so a lot of prep work went into kind of repairing uh, and strengthening anywhere it got broken. We cleaned it all up and really all that was left afterwards was to rebuild the engine. As you remember before, the engine had a crack in it from the starter. So uh, the parts all got ordered up, they all arrived back on the bench. And the only thing you have to do, rebuild it, put it all back together, do some wheelies. Right, so the bits have come for the engine. Um, so here they are here. So with this one, the two of them seem pretty much identical, with the exception of one thing. This here uh, looks to be an M6 thread, where that there we uh, bolt goes in. On this one, it's an M8. I should be able to work around it, um, but other than that, it all seems fairly legit. Um, Another wee thing to look at. I'm actually taking the, the head studs out at the moment. This is the area where it broke before. Where you have that machined edge and it stops. That is your stress riser and that is where the crack propagates from. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take a uh, die grinder and just smooth that into a nice radius and I should hopefully make this actually a bit stronger by removing material. I've just used the carbide burr there on the end of the die grinder just to kind of take the sharp edge off that so now we've got kind of a nice flowing shape no stress risers so hopefully that should last us a little bit longer than the last one alright so I've got the first seal in and the way I got the first seal in was to set it lightly in its seat take a, uh, a socket which matches the outside diameter of the seal like that and then just tap it in with a hammer. Um, there's another seal to go in here, but I'm going to put the bearing in first because I'm probably going to have to uh, heat this up to get the bearing in uh, and I don't want to damage the seal in the process. So we'll put the bearing in here and there first and then put this last seal in once the case is cooled down. Oh, fucking hell. All right, I'm not going to lie, that was a wrestling match, uh, but we've got the both bearings in now and both seals and really all I need to do is uh, just put these uh, put these two studs in for the head and we can start building again. Uh, kickstart shaft is in place it kind of goes in it's got a little spring on it you need to preload the spring against the uh, the case and then twist and drop it's a complete fuck show of a design but it works put this gasket on which we never forget to do never forget to put that gasket on ever so what's your seven year olds in a fucking factory to build these things they don't get paid enough <laughs> so one of the first things I did was um right on all the bolts what they were the bolts are all greasy as fuck so all the fucking writing come off most of them oh there's one has something what's that say? pink pink aye that one says red she's got all your <laughs> get me all your crayons Sony can you use them? can you use crayons? Crayons never let me down. This is like the fuckiest bit of the whole. Well, I say this is the fuckiest bit of the whole engine. 
realizing you fucked it up and having to take the whole thing out, pull the whole fucking thing apart again. That's the fuckiest bit of rebuilding these engines. Mm. But as a rule, the clutch is the cuntiest bit. We're actually rattling through this quite quickly now, so we're now putting the springs and the, uh, the thrust plate for the clutch in. Um, really after that, there's not a whole bunch else goes on this side, so we can button this side up and move to the other side, which kind of has your magneto and your starter system in it. Right, so we've got the short block, as it were, uh, all assembled here, and now we get on to kind of assembling the, the cylinder and the head and all that there, good nonsense. So, um, yeah, let's get it done. Right, now, so now we've got the, the head and the cylinder on, and the next thing you want to do is kind of sort out your uh, your timing chain. But before you do that there, um, you're gonna need to remove the spark plug, and I'll show you why in a wee second here. All right, so you're gonna put the timing chain in now. So what you need to do is you need to have the crank position and the camshaft position just right whenever you put it together or your timing will be all out of whack. All right, this engine has what's called a waste spark. So what that means is that it sparks at the top of the compression stroke, but also at the top of the exhaust stroke. So your cam can actually be 180 degrees out of sync from this here, that doesn't really matter. Here's your cam gear here, it's got two marks on it and as long as one of them, doesn't matter which one, is pointing upwards along the axis of the cylinder, when the piston is at top dead center, then your uh, timing will be spot on. So what we have to do is here, just position this such that that will sit on it with one of them little marks pointing up 100%. So that's in the right place, we don't need to turn that or anything. So the next thing you need to do is confirm that your, um, your piston's at top down center, and that's why we took the spark plug out. So by taking the spark plug out, what you have is a direct port, a direct access hole straight into the cylinder. And what you want to do is you want to reach down through it with something like a screwdriver or an Allen key. Not something too sharp, in fairness, like because you don't want to kind of cause any damage inside this. So we'll do that now. I've got a wee Allen key here with a wee ball end on it, which will be perfect for the job. So you set this, put this down the spark plug hole, and then gently what you want to do is you want to turn this crankshaft. As you turn the crankshaft, what you're feeling for is the top of the piston, and you'll feel with this Allen key, the piston come to the top dead center, so come towards pushing the, the Allen key up, and then as you go past top dead center, you'll actually feel it kind of dip again. Yeah, it's right there. So using that wee trick, I found top dead center. And actually, if you look at the engine, you'll notice that the Woodruff key for the uh, flywheel is actually pointing that way. So that's kind of a, another indication of it as well. But I like to double check these things. So that's now pointing to top dead center. Thing you need is your cam chain. So you want to get the engine on its end like that. Lower the cam chain down. You want to get your cam gear. Thread it through the chain. So now you get your camshaft gear with the chain on it. It's pointing directly upwards. And you want to lift this just up, watching this bottom, the bottom of the chain here. There you go. So that is just engaging with that there bottom gear. Clicks up over. This is pointing straight up. The little dash is pointing straight up. The chains around both gears. Happy days. And just put the wee bolts in. So 
So that's the timing done. We're just going to put this top tensioner on, loads in from the top, and then there's the uh, the tensioning mechanism for it that goes in here. And then we're ready to put the, the stator plate back on, and start with the ignition system. Right, so the stator plate back on, we've got the starter motor in here. The starter motor's got a little, little gear train going on in there, and then up here, you've got its kind of output sprocket. Chain runs around this big starter gear. And you've got a couple of little um, kind of chain tension y looking things. Now, what we're going to do is put the flywheel on. The flywheel has kind of like a one way bearing clutch thing which runs on on the outside of this bearing here. Um, I've got this uh, flywheel pretty well wrapped up because there's a lot of small components in it. This socket's in here just to stop these little kind of rollers from falling out. Carefully lower this on top. Done. Just gonna put the cover on it. Um, fill it full of oil eventually. Um, and rebuild the carb. And that's about it. Yeah. No more bits left in the box really, so Hopefully that's everything. Fucking hell. Greg, can you tell me about your replay school grips? Fuck off. What's wrong with you? Tell the world about your replay school Come on, like, what the fuck? Right. So what, what I've got here is a, a proper set of Irwin vice grips. Proper. Like menus. What the fuck's that? Okay, there? right. Pick this up with your magic grips. Hold still. Your magic grip and see. What are them? Pick it up. Just pick it up. You can pick it up. Just clamp it. Yeah. I'm calibrating it like a man. Yeah. Done. Oh. Right. Now let it go. That's a seal that can't be broken. Let it go. Why? Well, just let it go. Right. And then if you want to do it with my grips. Done. Yeah. Same tension. Right. Right. I'll do these a different thickness. Done. Can you show me how you do a different thickness? And just da 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 just if to you, show you. If you had the fucking upgrades. if you had the fucking adjustment every time, you'd be more fucking careful. You don't have to. I just know my tension, look. There's my grabs at my tension. What a guy. Ah, it's coming to death. Every time. I don't know, like where have all the craftsmen went, like? Yeah. It's just taking taking the fun out of it. Look at all this logic. There's fuck all logical about that. Well hey what, when they break I'll lend you these ones to fix them with, right? <laughs>